everyone, and welcome back to In the Kitchen, Conversations on IoT. I am Carrie Siggins, CEO of Stone Age, which is the parent company of Breadware. And today I have this amazing trio with me, the founders of Triton Sensors. So gentlemen, so glad you are here today. Yeah, thank you so much, Carrie. We're, we're, we're thrilled to be here. What an honor it is. Wonderful. Well, why don't you each take turns introducing yourselves a um, little bit about who you are and what you do within the company, and then we'll j jump into what Triton does. Yeah, thanks so much, Carrie. Uh, my name's uh, Garrison Parthamore. I'm a sales manager here at Triton Sensors. I'm also a co-founder with uh, these two uh, great individuals. Uh, my, my brother, Lance. Lance? Sure. Yeah. My name is Lance Parthamore. I'm Garrison's better half. Uh, <laughs> I, I take care of uh, a lot of our product and, and uh, business development here in trade. Great. Yeah. And uh, I'm Jack Garissi. Um, I'm a friend from school uh, with Lance and Garrison. And um, I help a, a lot on the software side and, and kind of a point of contact for, for technical things. Wonderful. Well, thank you all. All right, Garrison, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about what Triton is all about? Yeah, yeah, sure, Carrie. Thank you so much. Uh, I think I think Triton South Sensors was really founded with the goal to uh, help end the vaping epidemic. Uh, honestly, I, I didn't hear about what vaping was until I was about a sophomore in high school about about uh, four years ago, and I really didn't know uh, how big of a problem it was until I started noticing some of my friends would start doing it in trouble for for vaping. Um, I don't I don't think people many people are aware of how big of a problem vaping is. Uh, it's called an epidemic for a reason. It kind of affects every person. I think everyone has an experience with someone that, that does do vaping or has, has picked up an addiction because of vaping. And I think our, our goal really as a company has always been to help end that vaping epidemic. Um, I think that's a, a big focus for us, um, not just in the K-12 uh, marketplace with, you know, the schools, um, but also in hospitality, entertainment, um, really, really anywhere where uh, smoking is prohibited. Yeah, that is, that's fantastic. So Tell us a little bit about how it started. Like you had this idea and, and, you know, what were those early days like? Yeah, sure. So, um, so obviously Lance and I are brothers uh, and Jack was one of our good friends from school. Um, we were all the founders of a, of a STEM club at, at the same high school that we went to. Um, so when uh, Lance was a senior and Jack and I were both uh, juniors in high school, um, for our STEM club, there was something called the Governor's STEM Competition. So we're from Penn State. It's the Penn State Governor's STEM Competition. And, and the kind of the like um, the challenge for that year was to like solve a problem facing Pennsylvania for like, I think $500 is our budget. So uh, we knew vaping was a really big problem. We also knew that um, uh, there was something called vape detectors, um, which basically are devices that uh, were able to detect vaping or any type of smoke based drug and then uh, alert the, the school to it. Um, you know, because obviously vaping is a re really big problem and then school bathrooms are really the location where a lot of, uh, a lot of students will go to vape because you know, there's no cameras in there. There's not much supervision. So. Uh, we have heard of the, we had heard of these devices, but we saw they're, they're really, really expensive um, and kind of unattainable for a lot of schools. So our mission was to kind of create a vape tech that was kind of affordable and could uh, really solve a pressing matter for schools. So we 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 did this. We did started developing uh, this uh, this uh, vape detector. Um, it was really really simple, and everything was like three D printed, um, just kind of a mosh pit of different parts. Um, but it was, it was pretty cool. It uh, didn't work that well. Uh, it was really hard to use and all that good stuff. But it, hey, it's prototyping. Um, so we went to the competition, uh, we got third place, uh, we're all very competitive. So obviously we're not satisfied with that. Um, and that, that was 2020, March of 2020. So, uh, if you're familiar with, with that date, it's, it's uh, infamous. Um, and that's when the COVID pandemic started. Um, so, uh, Lance, Lance and Jack were in this, uh, stats class together and they had the idea to like start a business and their first goal is to make uh, $10,000. So, uh, we're like, Hey, we're gonna have two weeks off school. Let's, let's take advantage of this time. Let's do something fun with it. I mean, make some money out of it. Um. So we, we uh, actually, I think it's the Monday, like uh, Monday, right after COVID hit, uh, we were going to school to like pick up uh, like school books and stuff like that from our lockers and stuff like that. So we met at IHOP. Um, I know it's not, like NVIDIA, they met at Denny's to start the business. So we met at IHOP uh, since America runs on, on, on IHOP, I guess. Um, but well, that's Duncan. No, you never mind. Whatever they're, I forget their slogans, <laughs> but, uh, but essentially we met there. We just kind of drafted our, our idea. We're like, Hey, we can do this. We can do this in two weeks. It'll be great. Uh, we'll, we'll have a lot of fun. We'll, we'll get some experience out of it. Um, so long story short, you know, uh, life kind of hit. Like we started working on this company. Didn't really have any idea of what we're doing. We're all young and dumb and inexperienced. We thought it'd be really easy. And it obviously wasn't. It took a lot more time than we anticipated. But um, we kind of just grew our company from there. Started developing our products and, 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 and took things from there, I'd say. That's great. 
So Lance, did you understand what IoT was and what IoT products were uh, when when you started out on this endeavor? Maybe you could talk a little bit about what you knew and what you didn't know and what you've learned since then. Yeah, uh, when we first started, I had no idea that there was this whole industry out there that's, that's based on IoT uh, and uh, connecting everything via the cloud. But uh, yeah, we, when we first started, we didn't really uh, know how we handled notifications. We didn't have a a, a great platform for that. Uh, our our idea was actually uh, hardwiring, uh, hard coding the uh, notification emails into the uh, Arduinos that we were using in the initial prototypes. And obviously, that doesn't work if you're installing in a in a school and then somebody leaves the school, somebody new joins, uh, just a, a huge mess. Um, so uh, from there, we, we had to really ideate and iterate to uh, to find a good solution. That's great. And Jack, how about you? So, you know, how how did uh, how did your expertise and software or I guess learning software come into play with developing the product? Yeah, so I would say um, a lot of it is is learning, um, really just kind of uh, uh, learning things as we go and being able to work with great people uh, like Redware. And learning from them and really learning a lot from them and all of the things that they already have laid out, all of the uh, skeletons that they have laid out for you to kind of build on top of and customize for every business, that really helped a lot. So um, I wouldn't say uh, I came to the, to the table with, with a ton of expertise, uh, definitely um, uh, learning a lot, but it's been, it's been really fun. Yeah. And I really enjoy uh, programming and kind of getting everything to work together on the back end. That's really interesting. I think how... Um, uh, you can really integrate anything these days. So that, that's probably uh, um, the most interesting thing to me now. Yeah, absolutely. And so, uh, Garrison, maybe talk a little bit about how the overall product works and, and how you need to, you know, it, it's detecting smoke of some kind. Um, so can you talk a little bit more in specific about, you know, without any sure, sure anything proprietary yeah. uh, about how your device Definitely. works? Definitely. Yeah. So uh, usually like the spiel I give is like, um, you know, back in the day, people used to smoke like cigarettes in the bathrooms, you know, even my, my, my parents would say like at their, at their high school, like they had designated smoking areas, even like teachers would be in there smoking. So obviously, you know, times have changed now. It's all e-cigarettes, you know, vapes, uh, like I uh, like um, like a dab pen, which is like a marijuana in, in like a, in a smokable form. Um, all these like crazy things. We've even seen like fentanyl nowadays, but um, essentially, uh, how these devices work is they just sit in the, in the ceiling of any bathroom or a locker room. Um, they install using what's called power over Ethernet cabling, which is just a cable that provides data and power. Uh, and then these devices will be able to detect the vaping and then send a notification via text or email or a push notification. Um, we also have a bunch of different integrations, different like camera systems and VMS systems. So um, let's say if a, if a teacher isn't able to get the notification and respond right away, they're in the middle of the class or whatnot. Um, then the camera can start recording and then kind of like maybe catch the student as they're leaving. So uh, honestly, super simple um, how, how the devices work. Just basically um, detect vaping. They'll send a notification and let the designated authority know. Yeah, that's great. And Lance, uh, you know, the, the, you're in business development. What what do you think the future of this device is for other other industries or other types of customers outside of the school system? Yeah, from the beginning, we, we, we knew that schools and uh, the vaping epidemic was sort of the low-hanging fruit that, that we could use to, to get this off the ground. Uh, but we also understood that there are uh, lots of potential opportunities uh, outside of education, outside of uh, vape detection, uh, that we can use uh, similar or the same technology to, uh, to tackle. Um, so some of, uh, some of the industries that we're, that we're looking at and we're starting to penetrate are hospitality, um, a lot of hotels are, are interested in, in our technology uh, to enforce their, uh, their non-smoking policies in rooms uh, to kind of uh, recapture uh, some of that, the loss, uh, some of the, the revenue from security, de security deposits and uh, a big value add for, uh, for us and with, with our dashboard that we made with, with Redware is that they can e even like make a, make a report that proves the vaping or the, the smoking in that hotel room. Uh, and submit that to the credit card company when uh, when there's a chargeback. So that's been very valuable for them. Uh, we've also had a lot of interest uh, from uh, from like uh, uh, public housing, things like that, where there's uh, no smoking policies in place, uh, big fire risk, stuff like that. Uh, uh, we've had pretty good uh, interest from like healthcare, uh, especially with like our, our noise aggression, keyword spotting um, 
capabilities of if a patient falls out, out of out of their bed or something or they're shouting for help um uh, our, our device is, is able to pick that up and then finally we, we've seen a lot of interest uh from a lot of retail especially in inner city in inner cities where we're working with a few major uh uh, retail chains are uh, to uh, to crack down on um, a lot. A lot of them have uh, like fentanyl problems in their in their bathrooms. People go in their bathrooms to to do drugs in uh, in unmonitored space. Uh, so this is kind of like the eyes and ears in uh, in that space. So employees can go check uh, check in on that whenever they get a notification. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe Jack, can you talk a little bit about the keyword recognition and how that works? Because uh, I think that's an interesting part yeah. of this technology. Sure. Yeah. So we do, uh, as Lance said, we do uh, keyword spotting and also uh, noise anomaly detection. So um, noise anomaly detection can be something, uh, just someone yelling or um, any vandalism in the restroom is kind of the, the current application. Um, and the keyword spotting um, works uh, very similar to uh, Amazon Alexa or uh, Google's Cortana or, or things, and it uses wake word technology. So it's not recording, it's not um, storing any of the uh, conversations, but it's just looking for specific words. Uh, and, and in our case, it ends up being um, help me, stop it, uh, gun, shooter, uh, vape. So I can see how that would be very valuable to, you know, to schools, to to public facilities. Um, and so, you know, obviously you're taking into consideration privacy. Um, so what, you know, how do you think that that privacy and security is going to play into the future development of your products? Yeah, 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 sure. I'm, I'll be happy to answer that. Um, so I think uh, obviously with the privacy, it's a, it's a major concern for a lot of people. I think we see a lot of things coming out with, uh, you know, various government uh, governments around the world and also with uh, different tech companies having uh, a lot of uh, leaks with data or intentionally spying on, on our customers. So obviously uh, data is of, uh, and privacy is uh, of the utmost uh, importance to us. Um, we do a lot to kind of uh, make, make, make our customers uh, aware of like, hey, this is what data we're storing. This is that uh, data we're not storing. Um, and we do uh, verify that like, hey, with our, with our keyword spotting, uh, we don't do any uh, like um, uh, noise collection or, or recording or anything like that. With our devices, they actually have no storage on them, so they can't really record anything. Um, the only really, uh, I guess, privacy would be like any, any data we store on our dashboard, but it's all uh, encrypted with like HTTPS and is, is protected by uh, various uh, various security measures. Um, but yeah, definitely we see the concern for like um, anything uh, like with a, with a microphone or anything like that. Uh, but but again, we, we try to make it as uh, clear as possible to our customers that there's no uh, sound recording or, or anything like that um, going on with our devices. Yep, that's great. And Jack, maybe you could talk a little bit about the importance of the dashboard. Um, so I know you're using Breadware's uh, Rise platform. So can you talk a little bit about, you know, how, how, what kind of data is being visualized and how your clients are using it? Sure. Yeah. So uh, a couple of things that we're tracking is uh, particulate matter. So the particulate matter index, and that corresponds to uh, the vaping instances. We're also tracking uh, VOCs, which stands for uh, volatile, volatile organic compounds. Uh, as well as temperature and relative humidity in the rooms. So on our dashboard, uh, you can generate um, charts and pick between the four or five parameters and kind of see what the activity is during the day and how it changes during a vaping instance. Uh, you can see what locations are most popular on site. And it really, uh, we think, allows schools to make their own inferences from this data. So, um, for example, if you see a lot of activity at lunchtime uh, at the cafeteria bathroom, um, you can add staff there. Um, you can limit the number of people in the bathroom. Um, but I think really the data visualization, the biggest uh, asset for it is allowing the schools to make their own inferences off of that. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and to kind of go off that as well, like uh, we track every single time the device detects a vape or another incident. So with, with the dashboard, however, we have things set up, you can like view that data, you know, within the last week, the last month, the last year. I think that's really powerful data for for schools to take to their uh, to their uh, boards and say, hey, this is what uh, was going on, you know, last uh, like last year, but now uh, the trends been going down and down and down. So these devices are working; they're doing a great job of, of kind of eliminating the threat of vaping. Um, so I think that's really valuable data that, that schools can can use to showcase to you know their uh, their benefactors, um, their school boards, and their and their parents, letting them know that hey. Uh, we understand it's a big problem and uh, we're doing, we're, we're, we pay attention to it and we're taking care of it. Yep, absolutely. And the good thing is that it also can help diagnose trends if something is increasing too, right? And so, all right, what's happening? 
how do we address this? Um, so it, you know, positive in, in the other direction as well, so that schools can get get on top of um, you know a, a, of issues that might be happening that they might not have otherwise known or seen. Yeah. Okay, so you guys have done this. You're a couple years into your business. Um, what has been the most interesting thing that you've learned about developing an IoT device? Uh, I'd like to hear you know, each of your perspectives. Sure. Even yeah, kind of Carrie, I think it kind of goes back to us talking about the beginning, kind of our founding story where we like had these couple weeks off of school. We thought, hey, let's do something with it. Um, take advantage of this time off um, and maybe make a difference. Um, we really thought we could develop this product, you know, in a couple months and have it ready to go to market. Um, and obviously that's not how, how the world works or how uh, this technology works. It's in incredibly, uh, inc impre incredibly impressive, the technology behind everything. But I actually have a really good product that, that, that can, can be used uh, successfully. It does take a lot of time to develop and, and to do it right. Um, Obviously, our first revisions of our products were nothing compared to what they are now. And we've, and I think IoT has, has allowed us to make this product better and better, continually update it and just make it something really, really great for our customers. Great. Lance, how about from you? Yeah, sort, sort of like what, what Garrison said, uh, it's, it's been a long uh, learning process um, uh, going through this journey of, of developing hardware products and also the, the software that and firmware that goes alongside them. Uh, when, when we first started, uh, like Garrison said, we're, we're kind of naive, thought, thought it'd be uh, a month or two long process. Uh, we we kind of looked to shadier parts of the internet to, to hire uh, not so reputable uh, firmware, hardware uh, people to uh, to put everything together for us. Uh, needless to say, uh, it, it didn't work out so well. We, we wasted a ton of time, ton of ton of money. Uh, one of one of the hardest things for us was finding good, reliable people firms uh, that that we can uh, that, that we can form like long term arms with um, to, uh, to help uh, push our technology forward. Yep, that's great. And Jack, how about you? Yeah, I think um, I, I spoke on this a little bit earlier, but I think the, the most interesting thing to me that uh, I didn't really expect when we started this especially is, is all the uh, integrations and customizability that, that comes with building a, a product like this. Um, it's really so open-ended and it, it's... Um, as much as you can imagine and can dedicate resources to, you can really get done. So I think that's been the most uh, interesting and um, exciting thing for me. Yeah, wonderful. I, just me, add on to that a little bit. I think one of the things I think has been really powerful is the power of relationships and networking and stuff like that. Um, some of the best uh, relationships we've had, including with uh, you know Breadware, has been through like existing relationships and contacts. Where like we can call up someone and be like, "Hey, we have this problem. Is there anyone you know that can help it? Help us with it." And every, every time uh, we've been amazed by the um, wide network of people out there have been willing to help us and, and all the great directions they've led us down. Well, you guys have such a fantastic story, and I am so glad that we are helping you on this journey. And I'm excited to see where you take this. It's really, uh, really exciting. And I really appreciate you all coming on and sharing your story. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. It's been a yeah. pleasure. Yeah, thank you, Carrie. All right. Thanks, Carrie. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next month.